Thank yes, you. Uh, th thank you very much. And I, I would like to say to those of you who had uh, questions that you wanted to raise, and also if you want to hear more about, uh, about the experience of SMART, also when it comes to the effects of the circular economy outside of Europe, for example, uh, when, when, it, uh, when it comes to, to recycling of waste, you should come to the reception and take the opportunity to meet uh, also other scholars in, in SMART, uh, including Maya van der Velden sitting at the back there who has uh, done field trips in, uh, in Ghana and worked together with, uh, with, with our uh, uh, colleague uh, from, from Ghana as well. So, so please take that opportunity afterwards. I would like to, to start the, 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 uh, the wrap up now, the concluding reflections, by reminding us about the starting point of SMART. The starting point of SMART is to contribute to, to uh, increased policy coherence for development. And our focus is on the global value chains and the effects that the economic activity connected to the production and consumption of products in Europe has, especially through the global value chains, affects, uh, well, not especially, but both within Europe and outside of Europe. And our starting point today was that there is an undermining of, uh, of local communities, undermining of the eco economies of the very countries that Europe wants to help through aid. More c money is taken out of these countries through unsustainable business activities than is given to the countries uh, through aid. And uh, slavery, modern slavery, uh, exploitation of people, environmental destruction, that is a part of business as usual in far too many cases. So that is the background for the proposals that we make, which, uh, which are aimed to contribute to sustainability. Um, and we have, I mentioned that, uh, that sustainability due diligence is a, is a part of the um, uh, sustainability assessment and sustainability due diligence is like a red thread throughout our uh, proposals. The business proposal, the proposals for, for the, the various uh, actors in finance, and also concerning the products. And the reason that we think that this is feasible uh, to, to get adopted uh, at the end is because the financial risks of unsustainability brings this home to everybody, whatever kind of, uh, of focus they may have when it, when it comes to business and finance. And I think it is important uh, to recognize that we need to, to broaden the um, quite conventional approach to climate risk that we have seen, for example, from the task force of climate-related financial disclosure. In one way, it's, uh, it really opens up the discussion, but when we look into the details, we see that, for example, uh, physical risks, the physical risks of climate change, doesn't fully include the, the, the impact of climate change on the humans that businesses rely on for as workers, as consumers and citizens. It does not include global catastrophic risks. Although there is a very good evidence base that business as usual is a certain path towards global catastrophic risks. And the Task Force for Climate Related Financial Disclosure does not uh, include the societal risks, does not, which, which span from the risk of unrest which may, might make it difficult for workers to get to work, or maybe they don't want to go to work, maybe they want to strike, uh, through a, a range of risks and to societal collapse. Because the situation is that we are not in a position now where we can discuss whether we would like to green the economy or whether we sh should think that workers should be treated better. We are in a state of emergency. And there are... A, a, range of scenarios, of possible scenarios that end in societal collapse, whether it is because global catastrophic environmental risks materialize or because it is because of the, the um, uh, reaction to the increasing inequality across and between jurisdictions. Societal collapse is a very real risk and in no scenarios that end with societal collapse is steady returns for investors or good profit for business likely. 
So this means that it brings us all together in a realization if we consider the evidence, because this is not speculation, this is research-based evidence that we have to take sustainability seriously. If we do that, we realize that not only are there extreme risks that we must do all we can to avoid, but there are great possibilities. Because by securing a good basis for everybody, by securing decent work and living wages and open and participatory processes, not only for employee, employees in, in European companies, but for workers across global value chains, also for the invisible workers, also for the indigenous peoples whose land is taken without their permission, if we include all of these in good processes to identify the sustainability impacts that we need to address and start addressing them, it will lead to a better world for all of us and possibility for value creation that can continue to give returns to investors. Therefore, although I will not say that there is a business case for sustainability and that it is a win-win, so we can just go ahead and do it, there, are, there will be tough choices and the transition will be harder the longer we wait. The longer we wait, the, the greater the risk of societal collapse and the more draconian the measures will be that will have to be put into place. But if we take this opportunity now with so many drivers for sustainability, with, uh, with uh, this uh, Greta Thunberg uh, movement and Extinction Rebellion and sustainable finance and circular economy uh, and even uh, Business Roundtable in the US saying that uh, the shareholder primacy thing wasn't such a good idea. I mean, can you imagine a more unlikely coalition of people saying that we need change? But we, we, there are barriers that we need to remove and a lot of good initiatives are being put into place in the EU, in member states, by businesses, by investors. And, and it is, there are pieces of the jigsaw puzzle of sustainability in place. But we need to make sure that all the pieces are there and click them together. That is what is missing. In some cases, human rights is missing. In some cases, a recognition of other environmental uh, issues besides climate uh, change is missing. So we need a research basis to click all these uh, pieces into place, connect the dots, and make sure that we have enforceable good rules so that European business and finance and production and consumption of products in Europe can be a part of the transition to a safe and just space for humanity. It is not going to be easy. It is going to be very difficult. But one thing is certain, and that is if we continue as we are doing now, we are making the risks of societal collapse stronger and stronger. And that won't be good for anybody. So I hope you will uh, join us in the reception afterwards. Talk to also other researchers in SMART. I hope that those of you who are in a position to work towards change, whether you are from uh, NGOs or trade unions or other scholars or, or from the Commission or member states, that you will work together with us. Take what you think is good of the proposals that we put forward and connect that with the things that you had been thinking of beforehand. And if you are from businesses or business organizations, we are very happy to discuss more with you. This is a part of our ideas of smart legacy that we can discuss and help also businesses in this tr transition. And first of all, I will, or, or not least, to be together in this uh, new type of discourse that we have to have, because sustainability is possible, but we all have to work together to achieve that. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now you have a, a, a drink reception with, uh, and you can meet all the conference speakers because of course you saw three rapporteurs, but the team, the smart team, can you raise your hands? The smart team, yes. <laughs> it's much bigger, <laughs> it's much bigger so you can, uh, you can meet people. And uh, you have the display of smart results from work packages on mobile phones and textiles. 
uh, and smart collars are available for, for informal discussion, so don't hesitate. And you, Mikel, uh, you can also speak with, with Mikel uh, because I think uh, it's, it's an example of a, of a smart company. Thank you very much. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you, Benoit. Thank you, Leontine. Thank you.